All right, we're gonna create the simplest possible rig for animation. I'm just gonna make sure my Maya looks normal here first. Outliner, viewport, channel box. Uh, I'm gonna create a polygon cube. Create, I'm holding down the space bar by the way to get this marking menu. And I'm going to create polygon primitives cube. And I'm just going to the cube itself. I didn't go to the option box. This brings in a cube that's basically one unit big it puts it right in the center of the universe, or right in the middle of this grid. And so what I'm going to do first of all is I'm just going to raise it up so it looks like it's resting on the grid. And since it's a unit one big and it's right in the middle, if I type in 0.5 for the translation on Y, that should raise it up like it's resting on the grid. The other thing I want to do is I want to add some deformation possibilities to this. Uh, and what I mean by that is I need to subdivide it so it bends more cleanly. If I try to bend it now, what happens is it just kind of shears, right? So in order to get a, a cleaner bend in there, I need to subdivide it. So what we'll do is we'll go into its construction history, which is here under inputs. It's called Polycube 1. And if I left click on all of these subdivision channels and then middle mouse click in the viewport and drag right, I can interactively subdivide this cube. Or I could just select the text fields here and type in the subdivided value I want, which I'll say is six. Now if I were to deform this cube like so, I would be able to get a, oops, hold on, let me make that soft selection a little less drastic. Now I would get some deformations actually happening there that, that are a little bit more sensible, right? So I'm gonna go back to the start here and now and I want to make sure that there's none of that information going into the cube except for a rig. We want to build a rig to control this cube. We don't want history on it. We don't want unnecessary transformations on it. So I'm going to freeze it out and get rid of the history. So I select the cube and I go to edit, uh, delete all by type history. Uh, that gets rid of the construction, but it doesn't get rid of the transformation. To get rid of that, we go to modify, freeze transformations. And now we have a cube that's basically exactly where we want it. And it doesn't know any better than to be right where we want it. So if I moved it over here and rotated it around and I realized, oh, I didn't want to do that. That was an accident. It's not hard to get it back to where it was. I don't have to type 0.5. All I have to do is go in and type 0. It goes right back to where we want it. So there's no history going into this. There's no transformations going into this. Our rig can tell it exactly what to do. So first I'm going to give it a name. We call it box and then because this is the polygon mesh for our box I'm going to give it a suffix called PLY and that's basically just what I've chosen as my suffix for anything that's made of polygons. Um, now we need to create a rig. We need something to control this. We don't want to animate the cube itself. We want to keep uh, options open there. So I'm going to create this control rig. Uh, to do that I'm going to get a couple of NURBS circles. So I'll go to NURBS primitive circle and there we have our, we'll call this the offset controller. I want to make a bigger controller for the sort of placement of this. And I'm going to do that by control D, duplicate this um, curve, scale it out a little bit bigger. And then I'm going to freeze both of these curves just to make sure they don't have any transformations in there except for what we tell them. So now this curve uh, thinks that it's at a, a scale of one and its transforms are zero as does this one, even though they're both different sizes. And we'll give them some names. Let's call the outer one our master control. I'm going to give it a suffix of CTRL. And we'll give the inner one a name of offset. CTRL. There we go. So we've got two controls and we've got a mesh. Now to keep things clean, I'm going to group the rig or the controls separate from the mesh. So if I select both controls and hit control G, we get this group node. And then I can call that rig underscore GRP. And the mesh, we want to keep that in its own group as well in case we add other bits to it. I'm going to call that control G again. I'm going to control I'm going to call that mesh underscore GRP. So got these two different sets of information. One is what we're going to be driving, and the other one is what we're going to drive it with. Now we just got to tie the two together. So 
first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that my controls work. If I select the main controller and move it, well, nothing else moves. And if I select the offset and move it, nothing else moves. What I want is I want to be able to place the cube with this and then animate it with that. So let's zero those both out. Since we froze them earlier, they both go exactly where I want them. And then I need to make the uh, oops, I need to make the master the parent of the offset. It's easy enough to do that if I select the offset, middle click on it, and drag it underneath master control. It makes it a child of the master control. Now when I select the master and move it, the offset goes with it. All I need to do is tie the cube to the offset, and we're kind of done. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to select the offset, I'm going to select the cube, and I'm going to constrain it with what's called a parent constraint. And now we have a fully functioning rig. Look at that. I can place the entire rig wherever I like, and then I can animate it relative to that placement. It's very, very functional. There's one thing missing, of course. If I try to scale this, nothing really happens. We just get this weird sort of offset happening. So to fix that, what I need to do is I need to tie the scale to this control as well. And that's simple enough. I select what I want to constrain to, then I select what I want to constrain, and I go to Constrain Scale. Now we have two constraints on this box. If I go under the uh, outline or the, the hierarchy here and look, you see you have a parent constraint and you have a scale constraint. So these are two sets of instructions telling the cube what to do. They're both tied to this, which is tied to this. So if I scale now, cube goes along for the ride. If I rotate, cube goes along for the ride. If I move this offset, or sorry, this master node, the offset follows. And of course, the offset always moves relative to that. So if I want to put everything back to square one, I can just type 0 into the transforms and 1 into the scale, and we're back to square 1. This is a bit messy, so I'm going to tidy it up a bit more. I'm going to group the two together, control G, and call the whole thing box underscore group, as if box is the character. And then I will save this. Save scene as, hey, I did this once before I cheated. I'm going to save it as box rig underscore v01.